All the January 24th, 2019 meeting to order. First item of business is uh, approval of the minutes from the January 10th meeting. Any changes or additions to the minutes? Stand is approved. Next item, it's a wonderful item. <laughs> First we'll need, uh, ask for nominations for mayor for 2019. I'll nominate uh, Henry Schwaller as the next mayor. I'll second. I have a nomination for Henry Schwaller to be mayor for the year 2019 by Commissioner Musil, second by Commissioner Jacobs. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Next item is a nomination and election of vice mayor for 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move we nominate and actually appoint Commissioner Sean Musil to serve as vice mayor for the next year. Second. Oh, okay. Somebody. Everybody likes it. <laughs> nomination by Commissioner Schwaller, seconded by Commissioner Jacobs. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5 0. What's next up? Sit. Uh, Sit. Don't go anywhere yet. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, we have to move. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> so, uh, you get to use a gavel at home. Uh, your children, you're going to need it. Uh, but I think it does come off. Yeah, it does. So. Oh, wonderful. James, when we look back over your year, uh, you came into this hit the ground running. We had a long-term water strategy that was kind of high-centered, and you got aggressive, you contacted the governor's office, and you started making things happen right away. Uh, you're very passionate about our community. You're very active. You were concerned about Canterbury and Vine Street and getting things done. And I like your attitude. You're good for the city, and your leadership is exemplary. Thank you for the past year. Thank you very much. I appreciate this, and I appreciate you guys allowing me to serve for a year because it is a privilege that the four of you have afforded me. So, thank you very much. It was actually a great honor to be able to be mayor that many of you have already experienced. So, thank you very much. I'm glad that I was able to survive the year without anybody <laughs> punching me. Nobody <laughs> punched you. <laughs> no, nobody. Or called your names either. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to write one? No, not really. Yeah, thanks. I'll we'll switch it out next week. I don't have to agenda. We all have to. Oh. I'll be like I like this view a lot better. <laughs> next item on the agenda is a financial statement. Uh, consider accepting the financial statement for the month of December 2018. Mr. Rupp. Thank you. This is a financial summary of revenue expenditure activities, City of Hayes, month ended December 31, 2018. Revenues in December totaled six million five nineteen five twenty. That's a decrease of a million nine twenty two seventy nine seven ninety two compared to the same period as last year. Given it's the end of the year and it's the time the rest of the budgetary transfers are made, most of this report will revolve around transfers. Transfer from the sports complex sales tax was up 75872 As the parks director noted at an earlier meeting, the sports complex expenditures were up as compared to a year ago, mainly for the new field dirt and laser leveling. <coughs> Excuse me. Combined month-to-date residential and business water consumption was up 22% when compared to this time last year. That translates into an increase in water revenue of 17% and conservation revenue up 148%. Year-to-date, residential and business consumption is off just a negative 0.61% with total revenue up 3.76. Notable areas of revenue decreases. Year-end transfers into the general fund from airport, commission capital reserve, water production, and water reclamation contributed greatly to the decrease in revenue mentioned above. While several transfers were increased as compared to budget, those were still lower than last year. Expenditures in December totaled six million five twenty one one ninety three. That's a decrease of two million two forty three nine fifty six. Notable areas of increased expenditures: city manager contingency was up twelve thousand seven hundred due to the new city web page design and new LED office lighting. Fleet maintenance increased nineteen thousand three twenty seven as compared to a year ago, led by fuel expenditures. 
Special parks expenditures rose 33500 due in large part to the purchase of a new restaurant, restroom, <laughs> Spariki <laughs> Park. <laughs> water reserve projects were up 21400 due to the water line improvements on East 10th Street. Notable areas of decreased expenditure. Aside from the transfers already mentioned, there were a few other notable decreases in expenditures. Airport improvement expenditures fell 404000 due to the wildlife fence construction at this time last year. Public Works Service Division decreased 28000 due to the purchase of crack seal material, as well as updates to pedestrian lights. Month to date, general fund sales tax collections were at 560498 which is an increase of 5767 or 1% as compared to a year ago. So the city ended the general fund collection at 7146525 up 38480 or 0.5%. The report of quarter to date sales tax collections by industry classification was basically flat when compared to this time last year. Portfolio certificate to deposit on December 31, 2018, totaled 44.75 million, with a weighted average interest rate of 2.29. That's up 1.08 from a year ago. Our value on the portfolio of Treasury notes is 7.707 million, <coughs> with a weighted average yield to maturity of 1.78. Total balance of the money market account on December 31 was 2.5 million, with a current yield of 0.5. Total investments are down 900,000 when compared to this time last year. And finally, you'll find in your packet a summary of the general fund revenue and expenditures year end of 2018. That's a similar format to what you'll find in the budget book. These numbers are unaudited. There are a couple highlights, however. Total operating expenditures, which does not include the transfer to Commission Capital Reserve, finished the year 492,000 under budget. That contributes to the ability to increase the transfer from Commission Capital Reserves from the budgeted amount of 801000 to $1.2 million. Therefore, our unreserved fund balance also stays at a strong $1.135 million, which represents about 10% of the operating expenditures. I'll make a motion that we accept the December 2018 financial statement. Second. Second. Motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Good to see the policy of... Uh, Sales tax returns. It's not much, but it's better than what it has been. I appreciate the city manager. I appreciate the city manager and city staff too, holding our expenses down and to come in four hundred ninety-two thousand dollars under budget is fantastic. Yes, it is. Call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries five zero. Public comments. I uh, want to thank everyone uh, who's here in chambers and watching at home. This is your part of the agenda. Uh, public comments on any non-agenda items. Uh, if you want to speak about agenda item, we can do that when we're considering it. If you want to come forward, come on forward. And I promise you, this will be the best 30 minutes of your life. Ah. <laughs> now, is this on the rezoning request? It is. May we consider that during that request? I will call on you then. Is that all right, Mr. Barney? We can. This is, is not terribly long either. But this is for non-agenda items. This is for someone that yeah, we, we do this. We really want to consider your request and balance it with. At a separate time. Yeah. May okay. we do that? Okay. That's fine. Great. Thank you. Oh, there's two. We'll keep that. All right. Great. Uh, seeing no one else, I move on to the consent agenda. I would ask for a motion to suspend the rules, so this is not a privilege motion. We can discuss it. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. The discussion is the commission rules of procedure. Commissioners, what is your pleasure here? Could I interject what was uh, said at your places this evening? Uh, last week at the work session, the City Commission discussed the possibility of making uh, the transition, the reorganization meetings a little more consistent. Uh, state statute mandates new commissioners after November election take seat at the second Monday in January, um, but the Commission meets on Thursday, so that would have to be a special meeting. Uh, the previous rules of procedure stated it was a uh, a special meeting the second Monday of each year or the first regular meeting following the second Monday. Um, so we've presented two options for the Commission to consider. Option number one would do away with 
or the first regular meeting following the second Monday, and you would have a special meeting every second Monday in January of each year to do the reorganization. Um, the second option, the one with the least amount of red um, strikeout, allows for the special meeting on the second Monday of each year. That will be the years after the election in uh, November, um, or at the first regular meeting in January. Um, so they would be a little closer together in most years and not be like this year where you have a, a longer gap uh, before the reorganization meeting. So you can choose one of these options or you can direct us to uh, another option. question I have, and maybe this is mute, and I apologize for not asking you guys you know, on this last week. Has anybody ever thought about moving our meetings to Mondays? I don't know how work schedule. Well, I don't want to compete with the school board and the, uh, the county, county commission. I also think that when people run for an office, they run with those meetings in mind. Right. Oh, yeah. So okay. That's fine. To do, just, yeah, to change mid course is not a good idea. Okay. Great. Uh, my, my preference would be to strike following the second Monday as presented in the second option from the city manager. I'm in agreement with that. I am too. I am uh, too. I'd, I'd entertain a motion for that. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, your rules of procedure will be updated. Thank you. Thank you. No unfinished business. We're going to move on to new business. Rezoning request for the property located at the southeast corner of 22nd Wheatland from Neighborhood Conservation District, NC3 to Commercial General District. Welcome. Good evening. Jesse Rohr, Director of Public Works. So the uh, item I want to talk to you about tonight is for the submitted rezoning request. For attractive property at the corner of 22nd and Wheatland, and the request is to move it from NC3 Neighborhood Conservation District to C2 General Commercial. So a couple images of the property. Property, as I mentioned, is located at 22nd Wheatland Drive, the southeast corner of the intersection. It's officially described as Lot 1 and the north 20 feet of Lot 2. It is catty corner from the north central. Good job, uh, Jesse. He looked right at me when he said that. <laughs> First of all, I want to cover some of the zoning, uh, current zoning districts within the, the area of the property. As you can see, there are several different zoning districts near the property. The property to the west is zoned C2, while others in the area are zoned as various different residential districts. Since it was brought up last week, I do want to mention and discuss just for a minute about the property to the west. Fronts 22nd Street, that is zone C2. It was actually rezoned from agricultural to commercial in 2014, just prior to the state DCF building being constructed. This included the entire strip of property from 22nd, or excuse me, along 22nd from Canterbury to Wheatland. Most of us knew this as the Alfred Geist family property. This rezoning went through the standard zoning process, including public hearing notifications of homeowners within 200 foot of the subject property. 70 different properties fell within the notification area and were sent notices prior to the public hearing. There was one comment from an audience member back at that public hearing in 2014 who asked specifically what type of specific use is being proposed on the property. And the answer was the same that we'll talk about here in a minute when we talk about specific uses in any particular zoning district. I'll cover that in just a moment. This particular corner that is uh, the subject of the rezoning is identified for medium density residential on the future land use map. The area directly west, as I mentioned, has already been rezoned to C2. As with any rezoning, we like to talk about the compatibility matrix scale that's found in the comprehensive plan and how it rates the different properties. The comprehensive plan shows a value of two out of five, with five being the highest, between the commercial and the medium density residential to the south. The same matrix scale rates this rezoning request a five out of five when compared to the commercial property to the west of Wheatland, or to the west of the subject property. The new Unified Development Code, the UDC, buffer yard regulations, do make this request more acceptable than the matrix shows. And I'll talk about the buffer yards uh, again here in just a slide or two. A couple quick things to cover. Um, we talk about uh, always encouraging, uh, trying to encourage development of sites 
where there are all utilities and street improvements already in place. And I also want to cover, these are, uh, this is the list directly out of the UDC that shows the uses that are allowed by right in any C2 zoning district. When approving any rezoning, it's important to keep in mind that once zoned, any of these uses on this list are fair game for a particular, particularly for a C2 zoning. It's always important to not zone with any one particular use in mind, even if it is known what may be planned. I will note that the property has been zoned as residential for approximately 25 years, with no development occurring on them during that time. A minute ago, I mentioned buffer yards and how that affects uh, different zoning districts and their compatibility to each other. By definition, a buffer yard means an open space, landscaped area, fences, walls, berms, or any combination thereof, which are used to physically and visually separate one use of or property from an abutting property in order to mitigate the impacts of noise, light, or other nuisances. Buffers make different zoning districts more compatible than they would be without. Buffer yards are required, and this particular project would not be approved until they would be met. In this case, the property owner would have to provide a 10-foot buffer on the south property line. First state statute, as with any rezoning that comes before you, you have three particular options, uh, three specific options. You could approve it, as was recommended by the Planning Commission. You could override the Planning Commission to approve, which would take a two-thirds majority vote of the City Commission. Or if you feel need for further discussion, you could return it to the Planning Commission specifying the basis for doing so. This would be the recommended action. If you that, I'd take any questions you might have. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve ordinance number 3959 rezoning lot 1 and the north 20 feet of lot 2, Tallgrass 2nd edition from NC.3 Neighborhood Conservation District to C2 Commercial General District. Second. There is a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Jesse, what determines what type of a buffer zone that you need, whether it be landscaping, whether it be fence, uh, so on, berm, so on and so forth that you mentioned? Well, the UDC actually lists options, and so uh, a, lot of that, a lot of the choices are up to the, the developer. Uh, they can choose to do a fence. They can choose to do, it, uh, with, uh, do the screening with landscaping. Um, there are certain density requirements. Obviously, with a fence, you have more dense. Um, the, visual, the visual impact of a fence uh, doesn't allow you know, sight and sound through it as much as sparsely spaced trees. But if trees and landscaping are done right, that's an option. Uh, a berm is another specific option listed in, in the UDC. And usually what we'll see is a combination of more than one of those. Uh, it might be landscaping trees and bushes and shrubs on a berm that might even have a fence. And so, uh, like I say, with, at the time of site uh, plan submittal, that's reviewed at that time and, and uh, to make sure it meets the requirements of, of the regulation. Thank you. Anyone from the audience would like to come forward? Please do come forward, set up the microphone, and state your name for the record. Sure. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Luca Borney. Uh, my wife Christy is here tonight. I actually live at 1720 Wheatland Avenue. Um, I gave you the, the printout there, kind of with the Google map, because it's kind of showing where. I don't know if you can see that one as well, but on the east side there, we're the third house in. So, um, and that kind of brings, um, listening, listening to Jesse tonight, that kind of answers and will bring some of the questions as to why I'm actually here before you. Um, as you guys are aware, my wife and I did email you and we've had some conversations before. And I, I just I want to appreciate the responses that we got and the communication, kind of understanding the processes and what's happening. Because um, we didn't really get that in any format un until we reached out to the commissioners. Um, and I do understand most property along 22nd is becoming or already is commercial. Um, I think it goes without saying I'm, I'm kind of against this. Uh, Wheatland Avenue really has, has always been residential and I'd like it to stay that way. Uh, I do want you guys to understand that for my wife and I, we began this discussion with you the moment we became aware. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of an important factor for me tonight is when we became aware. Uh, the reasons I'm against this I have listed is obviously uh, the first one there is that C2 zoning. 
and I don't know anything about it, but it just seems like, uh, as, as Jesse pointed out, there are so many things it could be. And, and what really hit home for me tonight was when he paused for a second, keep in mind, in the future, you know, the best of intentions on what it could be today, there are so many things it, it could be in the future. And that kind of concerns me. I mean, obviously, on this list, a lot of things on here that really I, probably even complement a residential zone. You know, I mean, they, they go very well with some of these things you maybe you not want so close to a residential zone, especially when you start talking younger children or anything else. Um, and so the C2 zoning really kind of confused me a little bit. Um, th th this, this criteria includes so much, I'm sitting there going, well, what does it leave out? You know, and again, that concern is just because of what it is today is what is it going to be in the future? Um, my point number two, where I'm kind of against, we talked about this public hearing uh, that the, the Planning Commission had on December 17th. Um, and it said all property owners within 200 feet of the subject property were notified the public hearing. Um, I don't think I must have met that criteria because I did not get a letter. Um, in fact, the discussion tonight I had with both Adam and David um, really kind of helped clear up some, some, some information and stuff before that. And they even talked about maybe, you know, maybe in the future that needs to be a little bit longer. And I don't know whether that's a them decision or if that's a you decision, but it is one of the concerns that I, I did kind of mention tonight um, as well. Um, the, the notice for, the, for this public hearing, from what I understood, the only thing I even saw was we had something on Hayes Post, really, I want to say around noon of the day of December 17th. Um, you guys certainly have busy schedules, and, and knowing that, that you know if this, that small time period to, to get there would have been difficult. Um, there was also was two other events going on that evening, including, a, as uh, our mayor said, you know Monday evenings are usually Board of Education meetings. There was also a Hayes High School concert that night. <coughs> Um, and then I've already kind of covered a little bit here on my point, sub point C that that 200 feet, um, you know, from my understanding, the, the property in question there's four lots there, so I'm kind of, kind of goes who was notified. Now the nice thing is, is is Adam tonight before the meeting really clarified that for me as to who actually was notified, um, and it does sound like they probably even notified more than 200 feet. Um, unfortunately, we were not in that, <laughs> but. Um, I do want to make sure each of you know that I respect each of you, and I'm thankful for the conversations and the emails, again, that we did have. Um, I just want to make sure you guys are aware that, again, when we started this conversation you, it's because that is when we were kind of being made aware of this for the, for the first time, what was happening. Um, something about this whole process, and, and maybe, maybe we just got left out. Maybe we're the one that got, that got forgotten. But something about the whole process just kind of feels, the way it's going down feels, feels wrong. It doesn't feel very transparent. And obviously, that's why I'm standing before you and why I reached out to you beforehand. Um, you know, I understand you're still going to, you know, you may not vote to change this, and that's okay. The only thing I would ask to review, and again, I don't fully understand if it's a policy that needs changed, or maybe just something, you know, for next time is those planning commission hearings, making sure that we do have uh, public notice and notice uh, in the proper time, and then those, the, the residential 200 feet. Um, you know, I started thinking about 200 feet. That, that isn't isn't really a, a lot you know I probably parked further away just parking and walking into this building than 200 feet and so I sit there and wonder and again I don't know if this is a, a policy that needs changed or just maybe a I mean we should just we should just change that to something else so um, I do appreciate you know again your guys' service and everything you do appreciate you for taking the time to listen to me this evening thank you Luke. thank you thank, thank you, thank you Luke. very much Luke. Jesse questions for you then so is this state statute where did the 200 feet come from it is directly out of state statute uh, state law says that Within the city limits, the rezoning requires notification within 200 foot of subject property. If it's outside the city limits, it's just out in the county anywhere, it's a thousand foot radius of the property. And I realize the Planning Commission is a legally separate entity from us. We can't tell them what to do, but they could consider a bigger area. It can. It makes sense to me. This house, again, as he points out, is not yeah. very far away. Um, the other matter is is, is is a problem. What is heavy retail, and how is that different from retail? Heavy retail would be like your, your Home Depot, uh, maybe a tractor supply, okay. uh, things of uh, that nature where you have, like, say, larger items. Your smaller retail would be your, your discount store, your Dollar Tree, things like that. So the, the, the question I have is it, we approve this tonight, and doesn't happen as it thinks something happens and it doesn't get developed. It's never happened before. Um, we can't change, Sean, if we change what can go in a C2 you know, after we've approved this, 
the lot owner could claim impairment, correct? Um, well, the authorities are mixed on that as okay. to whether that's a taking. Right. Um, generally, it's a it's a legitimate use of the, what's called the police power, and it's not considered to be a taking of a vested right or okay. something like that. But um, it's it's not without argument on the other side. Correct. But what I've seen recently indicates that uh, as long as you're not uh, singling out a particular property, right. you, you can change your uses in various districts without being accused of, in effect, condemning somebody's property. And so that's my question for the commission. Regardless of our action tonight, would we want to revisit this and perhaps ask the planning commission to reconsider? This law would not be appropriate for most of these uses, and, and, but it, but some of them yes. So do we? Can we re change our zoning groups? And well, of course we can. Do we want to? Yeah, that's the question, and that's probably a question for a future discussion. That has nothing to do with tonight. But I'm uncomfortable with this because of that. I think it's a good point. We we're not supposed to know what's going to go there, and it may not go in this property, but they're seeking this so they can operate a business. And I guess that's where I'm coming from in my, my I appreciate the Obornies and I appreciate you getting out and talking to us about the situation. As, as the mayor said, it's never happened that somebody's come forward for the zoning, zoning change and then changed their mind and it didn't go in. Isn't that right. what you That's said? correct. Um, the use that's being requested I think is pretty complimentary in that area given the fact that North Central Kansas Technical College is across the street, the hospitals across the street, it seems to me. Uh, it also seems to me that since C2 is across the street down the rest of 22nd Street, and as you go east, the other end is uh, Bruckner's, um, I, it, it feels right to me for that whole thing. And I sat on the 20-year the planning commission uh, committee that I don't know that this ever, um, we didn't talk about it at that point. Mm -hmm. We didn't know it was going to be there, and so we didn't have any questions. But to me, um, from where I sit looking at it, with given the C2, given Bruckner's on the other end, given the use that is being requested for this particular property, I'm in favor. I'm also in favor of any discussion in the future that anybody okay. would want to have. The question I have is we all kind of have an idea what's going to go in there. But generally when this happens, we don't know that. I mean, this is kind of different because – say it leaked out or whether that we know so yes you it is I mean it is very complimentary where it goes in there but if we didn't know that I mean, we can't really think that way I've only been a commissioner for a couple of years and you guys have been around a lot longer than I have I have known when we've had a land use situation come up so maybe it doesn't usually happen that way and I wasn't aware before I became a commissioner I was oh. gonna say uh, that I <clears throat> yes we were made aware but um, to me it doesn't matter shouldn't matter right because um, yeah. people can not that that's the case here I believe they'll do what they'll do but people can do anything mm -hmm. and so we need to approve this or deny it based on any of these uses and so I appreciate people reaching out but to me it's inconsequential well looking at just this one here I'm not worried about heavy retail a lot of this can be eliminated because of the lot, lot size, size. So, you know, if this was, you know, the size of what it is on the other side of Wheatland, then I might worry about that. But this here is just the lot size is going to um, decide what kind of an impact that it'll have on the neighborhood. You know, for I, the reason I asked the questions that I did last week isn't, it wasn't, we talk, part of the reason that this is being brought forward and part of the justification is is that the lots to the west all the way to Canterbury are commercial. So I appreciate city staff going back and researching exactly how that came about because, um, as you know, to Mr. Borning's point that, you know, he just he feels like, um, you know, maybe the letter of the law was followed, but you just kind of feel like you didn't receive notification. It kind of feels doesn't feel above board, perhaps. Um, and I and I truly understand that because um, you know as I was listening to the presentation last week and we're talking about well you know everything to the west is commercial and so this fits into commercial well 
what I remember is when we re redrew everything for the UDC is that we redrew that to commercial. And so, and because of the way that we did that, there wouldn't have been notification given to neighbors in that area because it wasn't, it wasn't required to send a specific notice to those neighbors. So it's, it wasn't that I was, you know, so Jesse gave an answer that was legally correct in that notice was given because it was given as a public notice, but no specific notice was given to those homeowners. And that's my concern was my concern is that we had taken that those tracts of land to the west and changed them from agricultural to commercial without giving any specific notice to those neighbors now thank you for clarifying that that actually isn't the case because there was actually a zoning before that but um i do think that we need to be very cognizant of being completely above board Absolutely. and giving everybody notice so i don't i don't know where this i understand the 200 foot rule or notification comes from state statute but i agree there's no reason why we can't give more notice i and the other part of this for me is i'm, I'm trying i actually live close to this so i'm trying to think you know um i only live three houses down from um, office space and, and commercial so mm -hmm. um, i'm trying to think you know in my own person you know if i was this is my own personal piece of property how how would this affect me um and you know i don't to me, I, I actually live close to something similar to this development, and it, it, it doesn't affect me. And I, I think that this makes sense in this in this area. And I think with the buffer that that it works. So um, you know, I'll be voting in favor of it. But um, I I guess I just want to say that I I understand your feelings, and I understand the the maybe every, I I know that everything was done legally correct, but I I do think that we can do a better job. So thank you for being here and coming forward. I'm going to agree with Commissioner Myers. You know, the notice is the thing that concerns me. I mean, but as Toby, you've heard me probably since 2013 say, you know, why can't we do better? But we can put stuff in the paper, I suppose. And, yeah. But we, you know, the, the great thing about electronics, we can do it more than once. You know, maybe post it. The planning Commission is the same time every month, correct? Yes, third Monday of every month. Third Monday of every month. We know that we get nice little February letters, you know when it is. But I would like to see on a case like this, maybe we could go on his post or a newspaper twice a month, or two weeks, or more than just a few days out. Well, we can actually. I'll I'll put in a plug for our our Nixle service, yes, our, our electronic say, notification Nixle service that anybody can sign up for. That it's yes. free, and you'll be notified of exactly of exactly this. Yeah, this was discussed. Jesse, I forget, was this a public hearing item? So was there a meeting to set a public hearing and a public hearing meeting? Right. So this was discussed at two planning items. commission yeah. meetings. Yeah. Both have public notice requirements. Okay. City commission work session with the public notice requirement and then the city commission meeting with the public work uh, requirement. So this was a three-month process okay, so for public notice. I agree. Aside from the individual 200-foot specific notice. The Nixle is a great service, and I, I don't know how many people are signed up for it or how we promote it, but I think we should promote it even more. Yeah, let me, way. I'll talk about that in my report. I have a, just an okay. add-on with that. Any other discussion? Call for vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Jesse. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. and Mr. Borney, for coming. Yes, for thank coming. you, yes. Progress report. Uh, no progress report, right? Thank uh, you. We made no progress in January. <laughs> no, we did. No just, progress in good. January. Good. That's wonderful. Uh, report of the city manager. I have just a couple things. Um, next week is a fifth Thursday, um, yes, so yes. no meeting. Um, Stan Christopher will be in next month to give a wastewater treatment facility update. Uh, he normally would have been right around the holidays, but because of the holidays and the, um, the move to the liquid side, um, the new processes, um, we decided to hold off and have him come in. And then um, Kim mentioned in his financial report about the website expenditures. Um, Chad is coming in in a couple weeks to update the commission. We're getting ready to roll out a new website. Um, I think, as Chad's pointed out, we've gotten 10 years out of a $400 website, so we've definitely got our <laughs> money's worth out of this thing. Um, part of that website will be a new system of notification right, that won't dead. be Nixle. Yeah. Um, people will be going to opt in to various aspects of what they want to be notified on instead of the blanket pushes. Sure. Um, so Chad's going to give an update to the commission on that. Go ahead. Any questions, the city manager? Commissioner Meyer, Commissioner Inquiries. Thank you for my year of service. I'm happy that I can get to serve another year with all of you fine people. Congratulations on 
retirement? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the heavy lifting, we'll let Henry do the heavy, heavy yeah. lifting now. I think a lot of it you enjoyed and a lot of it I watched you enjoy when you were <laughs> able to go to Kansas City to the Oktoberfest and represent us. That yes. was very cool. Yeah. Uh, really do appreciate your service. It does take a lot of time being mayor if you're everywhere you should be, and you were. Thank you. Yeah, also, I thank you for everything you did. I have very much respect for the way you ran your meetings very efficiently, and uh, just, uh, thank you for your service to the city of Hayes. We have a busy year ahead of us. As the city manager mentioned, we're going to have our wastewater plant uh, go online. Uh, we'll be in compliance for the first time in years. I anticipate we're going to make considerable progress towards bringing water from Edwards County to Hayes and our partners in Rush County and our other partners in Ellis County. We are still very financially solid, probably one of the most financially sound cities in the state of Kansas, if not the Midwest, and we continue to maintain the city, pay cash for our projects, and we are on a good footing. I, we couldn't do it without great staff, but also great commissioners. It's a privilege to serve with you. We have executive session. We're, we're adjourned. Good night.